Look, geometry nodes are obviously amazing, but how to use some of them is not always immediately intuitive, and the Align Euler to Vector node was one of them, at least for me. But it's one that we end up needing a lot, so it's really important to know how to use it, and by the end of this video, you will. I'm Jonathan Lampel with cgcookie.com, and this video is an excerpt from my full geometry nodes course all about procedural modeling and animation called Assemble, which you can find on cgcookie.com and the Blender Market. Links to those are in the description below. As the name implies, there are two keys to the Align Euler to Vector puzzle, Eulers and Vectors. Euler, which looks like it should be pronounced Euler but comes from a German name, is a method of rotating objects that most 3D apps use because it's pretty easy to work with. Just head over to your object properties to see it in action. Under rotation, we have the X, Y, and Z angles. We can see that we have a bunch of different other orders of our axes for the Euler options. And we don't have time to get into all of the details there. But the order of the axes is really important for animation and rigging, and something that Wayne Dixon has covered extensively in the Fundamentals of Rigging course on cgcookie.com. The short version of it though is that you want to put the axis that's the most important and getting the most action in front. So if you're mostly rotating things on the x-axis, that's going to be the main axis of rotation, then just leave it at xyz Euler. However, if you're mostly going to be rotating something along the z-axis, then you'll want to set this to something like zyx or zxy. You'll notice if we flip between these two, then they're going to jump a little bit, and I'll explain that in just a second. But for now, just remember that an Euler is a set of three numbers that determines something's x, y, and z rotation. A vector in Blender, on the other hand, is either a point in space or a direction with a magnitude, and they're kind of interchangeable. For example, we can think of the location of our object here as a set of three numbers, just a point along the x, y, and z axes. Or we can also think of these same three numbers as an arrow pointing from the world origin to that object. And sometimes it'll be more helpful to think of the numbers as the point in space, and sometimes it'll be more helpful to think about them as the arrow. And in this case, let's think about them as the arrow. Now let's look at how this relates to the Align Euler to Vector node. So let's go to our node editor, Shift A, Utilities, and Align Euler to Vector. Here I've made some mesh axes so we can see which direction each axis is pointing really clearly. And let's get that to point in different directions using this node. First, let's add a transform node so we can rotate them. I'll just drag out and type in transform. Plug the rotation from the align Euler to vector into the rotation and then plug this into the result. All right, so now it flips so the X axis is pointing straight up because our vector here is 0, 0, 1 which if we map that out as a point in space would be zero along the x-axis, zero along the y-axis, but then just one along the z-axis. And so if we draw a line from the center of the world origin to that point, it's pointing straight up. And the x-axis is the one that it's getting applied to. So this node does whatever rotation is necessary in order to align this axis to this vector. It might be a little more clear if it was called align axis to vector, but either way. Let's go ahead and see how we can use this to point towards an object. So I'll go ahead and set this back to 0, 0, 0 for the location. And then let's add an object to point towards. I'll add an icosphere, mesh primitives, and icosphere. Let's join these two together with a join geometry. Alt shift to look at the result and maybe make this a little bit smaller. And then let's place it somewhere else. So I'll shift D on this transform here. And then I can go ahead and set the translation. But because I want these same numbers to be what's plugged into the align Euler to vector, I'll just use a third input. Shift A, input, and vector. And now I can plug these same values into the vector for the align Euler to vector, as well as the translation for the transform node. Now as I move this along the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis, our x-axis, which is the one that's selected on this node, is always going to point towards that object. We can also choose to align the y-axis or the z-axis. Now the pivot is which axis it's going to rotate around in order to get there. If it's set to auto, then it's going to be allowed to rotate along any axis, and so it'll always lock up exactly with wherever this point in space is. However, if I were to set this to, let's say, the x-axis, then it's not going to be allowed to rotate in this direction, because it's going to be locked to only rotating around the x-axis like that. 
So if I move this along the x-axis, it's not going to make any difference, but it will track it along the y-axis and the z-axis. If we want to see this, we can just look at this in side view. Again, the x-axis doesn't make any difference, but then the y-axis will and the z-axis will. If we switch the pivot to y, then we could look at it from front or back view, and it'll track it like so. Again, just ignoring the y-axis. And of course, we can't set it to z because it can't point and rotate around the same axis. So then it'll just cancel itself out and we won't get any result. Now, you might get into some situations where this node acts a little erratically. That's because we're only aligning one of the axes and that's not particularly stable. So for example, right now we're telling the x-axis, again, to point towards this object, but the y-axis could be pointing to the right like it is right now, or it could also be pointing to the left with the z-axis pointing down. Both of those are completely valid results, even though they're totally flipped. So if you find your object or mesh unexpectedly flipping sometimes, you'll either want to set the pivot axis so that it can only rotate around one of the axes and not flip around to the other side, or you'll also want to align one of the other axes to something else. In this case, let's add a second object to align the Z axis to. I'll go ahead and add a cube this time. Shift A, Mesh Primitives, and Cube. I'll Shift D and duplicate this transform down. Plug that in as the geometry. Plug that into the join. Let's Shift D on the vector input and add another one. All right, now I can point this to somewhere completely different. And let's have the z-axis point towards that. So to do that, we can add another line Euler to vector node, Shift D. You'll see that we have a rotation output, but also a rotation input. So we can set a different starting rotation. So let's go to the z-axis there, plug this vector into the vector, and plug the rotation into the rotation for the second align Euler to vector. All right, so now the x-axis is always going to lock to this object no matter what, but then the z-axis, which is the starting rotation here, is gonna do its best to try to lock on. Now it's not going to always point directly at it because the x always has to be pointing directly at this icosphere here. So there's a little bit of wiggle room, but it tries its best. If we wanted to, we could also add a third axis for the y, but since these two are already set, it's only gonna make a very minor difference. Sorry for the jump, but I noticed while editing that I said something that wasn't 100% accurate. I mentioned that our x-axis was pointing towards this point in space, but that's not really what's going on, and we can see that if we move our axes just a little bit. So let's take our mesh axes, and I'll duplicate this transform node and move it along the y-axis. And we can move it along the z-axis, and you'll see that it's no longer pointing towards our icosphere because that's not really what this node is doing. We're not telling it to point towards the icosphere, we're telling it to align to the same vector that's also moving the icosphere. So if you think about it, the icosphere is starting at the center and then moving over here. And if we draw that arrow, we can see that our x-axis is still aligned to that arrow regardless of where it is in the world. Now, one of the main use cases of this node is to align instances to a curve or to a mesh. So let's take a look at a couple practical examples and how to solve some of the most common problems. I'll go ahead and get rid of everything here and just start fresh with just our axes with control X and let's instance this along a mesh circle. I'll go to shift a mesh primitives and mesh circle. Drag this out to an instance on points, plug the axes in as the instance and then alt shift to look at that. Make it a bit bigger, reduce the vertices, and there we go. So now since we haven't aligned the rotation at all, all of our instances are pointing in their original direction. But let's go ahead and align it with the mesh circle. So I'll pull out from this rotation and use an align Euler to vector. And by default, it's just taking our x-axis and pointing it straight up. But instead, I want to align it with the normal of all of our vertices. So I'll drag out from this vector here and plug in the normal. Perfect, so now all of our x-axes are pointing outwards. This is gonna work great, but sometimes it might get a little bit weird. Let's say, for example, we transform our circle. Shift A, geometry, and transform. 
If we start rotating this, then you might notice that things aren't quite working as expected. If we rotate it around the Z, it works fine, but with the Y or the X axis, things start to get a little bit weird. So there are a couple things that we could do. The first suggestion I have is, in most cases, go ahead and just transform after you've already instanced. So for example, if we want to rotate the circle, go ahead and just align this to the normal, and then rotate this along the Y or X axis afterwards. That's going to be a lot more stable. But if for whatever reason you can't do that, and you have to transform this beforehand, then you could try to align one of the other axes. So let's say we want the X axis pointing out, but we want the Z axis pointing up. Well, let's go ahead and use the align Euler to vector node again, shift D, this time with the Z axis, and let's have that point straight up. We can just use the default vector of 0, 0, 1, and if we plug the rotation into the rotation, then nothing's going to happen, because this one is always going to be the most important, and the one that's going to override anything behind it. So if we want to force the Z axis up, we have to put this in front of the other one. So I'll go ahead and control right click drag to cut that connection, and instead drop it in front. Now the starting rotation is with the X axis pointing outwards, and the Z axis is going to be locked upwards. So that works, but it is a little bit limiting. What if we wanted the Y axis to always point towards that next point, or if we wanted to introduce some twist? Well, that's where curves come into handy, because they have a little bit more rotational information than meshes. But to explain that, let's look at the two in edit mode before jumping back into geometry nodes. So I'll hide our cube here, and first I'll just add a mesh circle, just like so, tab into edit mode, and then in my overlays, I'll go down to normals, turn on my vertex normals, and drag up the size. So this is the direction that all of these components are facing, and you'll notice that they're all facing outwards. However, as I move this circle around, they're going to start to shift. That's because normals always point outwards from a face, and there's no face here, so it's always just going to point away from the object origin. If I hit F to fill this with a face, then all of these are going to follow the face and point straight up. You can see this even more clearly if I have a plane. So I'll delete that circle, Shift A, add a plane. You can see they're all pointing upwards. If I just take one vertex, Shift D, duplicate this over. No matter where I place this, it's always going to point straight away from the object origin. However, if I take these two vertices, and let's say I extrude them, then the ones on the end are always going to match up with the face, and then the ones attached to two faces are just going to average between the two faces. So that's already really helpful, but that only gives us one direction to work with. We only have the normal, whereas curves have both a normal and a tangent. So I'll go ahead and delete this object, and I'll go to Shift-A, Curve, and Circle, hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, and let's look at these normals here. So if I go into my Overlays, I can change the size of the normals, or turn them on or off. So if you don't see them, go ahead and turn them on here. And now we can see which way that the curve is facing. It's always going to point towards that next point. But not only that, we also have some tilt information. So I can hit Control t and change the tilt here. And you'll see that the arrows are always pointing towards that next point, but also we can adjust the sideways pitch. Again, that's with Control T. So now we have two vectors to work with. The one that's going along the curve in this direction, and then the one that's going out of the curve in that direction. And once we have two axes to lock onto, then we can have a really stable rotation. So let's go ahead and set up the geometry nodes such that the object always follows our curve, no matter what. I'll go ahead and unhide our cube object here. I'll select it, and then I'll just drag and drop our Bezier curve here, and use that instead of the mesh circle. I'll plug the geometry straight into the points. Let's go ahead and get rid of this transform and mesh circle there. And maybe I want to scale it up a bit, so I'll take my Bezier curve, tap into edit mode, let's just scale it up. And right now it only has four control points, so let's go ahead and we could either subdivide it or resample the curve. I'll resample it, and that's just going to give it more points to work with. I'll set this to length, such that there's one point every, let's say, 1.5 meters. Just like so, or maybe two, just to space it out a little bit more. But there we have it. 
Then I'll get rid of one of my align Euler to vectors so we can start fresh. And let's say we want to align the Y axis to go along our curve here. Well, let's set our align Euler to vector to Y. And then I'm going to want to plug in the tangent rather than the normal because the normal is going to point outwards away from the curve, the opposite direction, whereas the tangent goes along the curve. So let's use our curve tangent, shift A, curve and curve tangent, plug that into the vector instead. So our Y axis is going along the curve like so. But now as we move our points around, if I were to tap into edit mode here, this is going to work, but it's going to be really unstable and sometimes kind of glitch out and go in all different types of directions. So what we want to do to lock this into place and get a really stable rotation is align one of the other axes to the normal. So let's go ahead and select that object, use a second align Euler to vector, shift D, duplicate that over, and let's say we want to take the X axis and point that away. So let's choose the X, plug the rotation into the rotation and plug the normal into the vector. And there we have it. Now if we go to our Bezier circle, move this around, that's going to be a lot more stable. And what's even better is we can use Control T and adjust the twist. So as a recap, an Euler is a set of X, Y, and Z values that represent the rotational information, and a vector is an arrow that points in a direction. The align Euler to vector node does whatever rotation is necessary in order to align one axis to that arrow that is the vector. When you're rotating objects and bones and things in the viewport, you want to set the Euler rotation mode so that whichever axis you're mainly rotating around is first in the order. The equivalent to that in geometry nodes is which order these align Euler to vector nodes are in. The one in front is going to be more important and override the ones behind it. And lastly, if you're only rotating on one axis and you don't want to set another rotation, but you want to avoid the object flipping randomly, then you can go ahead and just set a pivot, and in a lot of cases that's going to work. But again, only if the object is instanced along a flat plane, and in this case it's not, so we're going to have to set a second axis like so. So I hope you found that helpful, and that you can now use this node with confidence. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Again, links to the full course are in the description below, and I hope to see you there.